everyone, thank you. I have to say I'm delighted to open this uh, conference. Uh, I was looking forward to participate for a long time, and this time it's in Berlin, um, in the city I live, the city of choice, and uh, as well, I think, uh, the city with uh, really great uh, diversity efforts. Um, there is still so much to do, but uh, I feel it's a great place to be. Um, but what I want to talk about today um, is um, sharing um, stories, uh, sharing some practices, and um, talking about uh, my role and how my background actually helped me in um, performing this role. Um, I work at SoundCloud. Um, for those that don't know SoundCloud, it's uh, the biggest music platform. Um, probably the most diverse as well, uh, accessible in most of the countries in the world. And um, diversity for me means a lot. For SoundCloud, means not only the product vision, um, but as well um, organizational approach to being open, to being inclusive. Because to me, diversity and inclusion um, are interrelated uh, things. Um, and yeah, let's get it started. So, I don't like labeling. Uh, I work in recruitment. Uh, sometimes it's um, thought that uh, maybe we put people in the buckets, but I'm coming from a place um, and from experience uh, that uh, made me think uh, about the variety of people I meet. So, um, some of the examples, I don't normally ask people where do they come from, but what's their journey been so far. Um, I know that asking the simple question makes it easier for us to navigate uh, the context of meeting people, but it's uh, also easily putting people in the buckets and uh, in categories. Uh, so I prefer to make these things, uh, just this thing a bit more complicated. Um, I ask people about their journey and uh, I'll tell you a bit about myself. Um, there is a big list uh, of who am I. Uh, I picked some of the things. Um, so diversity um, means a lot to me. Um, one of my favorite songs uh, is played by um, Paolo Federghini and Marco Bianchi um, on the LP, several people if you're interested. And it says uh, jazz, the only uh, way of life. Uh, so while jazz uh, represents uh, diversity in music, I use various uh, ingredients uh, for diversity in life. And um, yeah, you can see that uh, my um, academic background has been pretty diverse. I graduated from psychology, um, studied public policy, specialized in uh, gender and sex research uh, for a good couple of years. And funnily enough, since uh, the primary school times, um, I was um, somebody called a diversity ambassador. Um, so a person uh, who was always taking care of um, uh, connecting uh, with people who had different opinions, uh, were weaker in a discussion. So even in a very homogeneous uh, society of uh, Poland, uh, we had people from different classes, different backgrounds, also different family problems. Um, and I was lucky enough to be in an experimental school where uh, conflict uh, resolution and um, approaching different um, backgrounds were um, very much incentivized. Um, currently, uh, as I mentioned, I work um, for SoundCloud, recruiting for a technology organization, helping the company to uh, grow and build the teams. Um, before I reached uh, today's place, um, I well, as I mentioned, I studied psychology. Um, I did uh, academic research for a good couple of years. I um, was an activist for LGBTQI uh, communities um, in Poland, Portugal, Brazil. Worked with elderly in France. Um, and uh, I'm still an activist for a uh, youth initiative for World uh, Association for Sexual Health, um, where we organize uh, different uh, lectures and trainings. What I enjoy about my current role is um, connecting people with other people and opportunities. Um, 
my, um, my story with recruitment started in Spain around uh, 2011. It was a plane crisis and um, uh, I realized how difficult it is to uh, be in the job market, um, let alone tech industry. But uh, back in the day, uh, the unemployment rate uh, in Spain was about 30% uh, among the youth. Um, sorry, 30% in the general population, 50% among the youth, uh, and uh, more um, sensitive groups like the elderly. Um, also, there was a striking, uh, striking difference between the pay among women and men. Um, so, having said all that, uh, I would like to move on to um, what kind of practices I've seen uh, that uh, were working, uh, what kind of practices um, I would say uh, is worth pursuing being on the business side uh, and being also um, on a, a candidate side. So, um, I called tech recruitment in four simple steps. Uh, it's ironic um, because uh, it's not a simple process. Um, I try to uh, put um, two perspectives. First perspective comes from uh, matching individual team and business needs uh, when people are looking uh, for a candidate. Um, obviously, um, a thorough understanding of the needs of the organization uh, and thoughtful strategy for hiring uh, would be a point one. So prior to opening a role, prior to, prior to, um, uh, prior to you know, starting all of the efforts, just ask uh, yourself uh, what kind of biases you have in organization, what are you missing, uh, missing on the perspective and the tendencies that are in the teams. Um, secondly, um, reaching out and sustaining a healthy balance uh, between incoming applications, referrals and a direct search um, is probably uh, very important uh, because um, this, is, um, this is how you can affect um, the people you will, be, um, you will be seeing in your process. Um, the interview process itself uh, should not only be evaluating, but uh, storytelling. And I'm not talking about, you know, saying cautionary tales or uh, selling stories only, but being transparent about what the opportunity is and um, what the obstacles there are, what the bottlenecks, uh, of course, what are the opportunities as well. So being honest there, um, I've learned it, it helps a lot. Um, while, decision, while we are moving to decision making, finally, um, constructive feedback, uh, alongside with explaining the actual opportunity, um, is, is also a crucial point because um, making sure that uh, the person who will be joining the organization uh, feels not only welcome but uh, appreciated and um, also walks through what will be um, their journey in the organization is super important. So, I would say it will be very incomplete if we would uh, think about the recruitment process only from the business perspective, um, but uh, what's the candidate perspective? So, uh, when I think about uh, different groups um, that are applying, uh, you first need to know the employer brand, you need to know the product, and also see yourself in the job description. So when you find out about the role and the job description is not really connecting with uh, who you are, you feel um, secluded from that, you will not apply to this job. So it sounds simple, but ma many times I see job descriptions, it's uh, not very inclusive. Um, so what we do at SoundCloud, for instance, uh, is to trying to uh, use the machine learning to um, see how the job description is um, approaching different groups. Um, there are different tools like Textio, for instance. Um, apart from that, consulting uh, diversity resource groups we have in the company is, um, is super important um, as well to get their feedback. Um, um, the second step of having an inspiring conversation with a recruitment partner um, to 
you know, see what uh, the company is standing for and uh, if it's a good place to grow. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a second step and probably a crucial one. Um, during the interview process, uh, it's a very draining, um, can be a very draining uh, process and um, I would say uh, showcasing your experience and skills should be balanced as well with learning about uh, what the company is and if it's a good place um, to grow, uh, not only professionally but as well personally. Um, and finally, um, during the evaluation of the offer, it's very important to both get and uh, give feedback on the process. Um, so, going through the best practices and maybe worst practices here, um, I would say seeing uh, in, in different companies making it a priority and it doesn't matter if you grow one person, 10, 500 or 5,000. Um, taking an example from the leaders and people, people uh, who have access to reaching beyond the conventional networks really makes a difference. So um, owning not only a referral process who is for anyone, um, just um, think about the research where uh, the um, um, yeah, I'm looking for a good word. Um, referring people who are just like you um, will not make a difference. You will just be magnifying um, the people who have in the company. But when you phrase it, when you uh, put um, a certain calling that uh, we would like to bring different perspectives, uh, people from different backgrounds, this will um, be changing quite a lot. Uh, again, what I mentioned already, um, Think about the language you use uh, whenever you reach out to those communities. Um, and um, finally, I would say looking for diverse candidates for every level of experience at any time um, should be also a best practice for, for your recruitment team because um, sometimes you hear, oh, it will take more time or um, those people do not exist. I'm I'm very concerned about um, accepting uh, such a reality because it's simply not true. Um, using scientific uh, approach, tracking data about the processes, looking at uh, which stage of uh, the recruitment process uh, people drop out, uh, there is some bottleneck, um, it's really helping the future outcomes. Um, encouraging again uh, the feedback throughout the process. Um, and a very important um, aspect is uh, designing the uh, recruitment process itself. So thinking uh, what is each person's role? Like why do you have all these interviews? What is their purpose? And uh, what biases uh, people interviewing other people might have? Um, accept that people do have biases. Um, obviously Training them on the unconscious bias uh, is, uh, or I would say rather empathy training uh, to understand how to be in somebody else's shoes uh, is very good, but um, except that biases may come into play at, um, on a conscious or unconscious level. Um, a no-brainer, um, learn from your mistakes. Uh, people do mistakes and being uh, being more mindful as you as you go along. Again, um, things I've seen not only in the startup tech industry, uh, but throughout a different variety of uh, businesses is that currently there is so much to talk about diversity. It's like a PR tool. Um, people talk about representation with uh, no further insights. I would say instead of that, it's uh, great to focus on um, the progression of um, uh, diverse folks you, you have in the company, um, talk about role models, talk about changing the game. Um, something I already mentioned, um, you may hear that um, diverse people do not exist uh, in, in, in this space. This is, uh, this is complete, um, I would say bullshit, uh, never t take that. Uh, never accept that as well. Um, similar to that, uh, hiring seniors uh, and hiring seniors only and 
assuming there are no diverse candidates among them, it's a very big mistake. Um, I can tell that uh, together with my team, um, we did quite an intense work of building up a leadership with people coming from various backgrounds, various genders. Um, I'm, again, not talking about representation, but the perspectives you want to bring and shape the company. Uh, last but not least, uh, when you do all that, uh, it's, it's an ongoing work. Uh, the change is not uh, going to happen uh, if you just conclude and reduce your efforts. So that's about bringing people in, outreaching, and um, after that, a um, very important part is uh, to create and celebrate the um, culture of uh, diversity. Um, and this is very much related to um, be inclusive, um, be mindful about uh, onboarding and uh, continue to learn about it. So um, I realized that having a certain um, code of conduct, working agreement uh, in place, uh, you call it, uh, but having some set of rules, a set of um, desirable and undesirable behaviors, uh, with a um, clear and confidential complaint path is helping against um, uh, you know, abuse or uh, just misunderstandings um, on this level. Um, having a diversity resource groups and celebrating their activity um, is also, um, it's also worth mentioning here because um, you can name, um, for instance, at SoundCloud we have um, diversity resource groups currently for building women in leadership, women in engineering, um, uh, queer clouders for LGBTQI uh, groups, as well as, well as uh, brown clouders for people of color. Um, so uh, these groups do have their budget, um, their members are celebrated and uh, embraced uh, in, in the company um, with um, um, you know, visibility uh, and, um, and this is uh, something that um, uh, everyone uh, can know about. Um, in the onboarding session for the new members, um, be thorough, spend some time into um, making them understand why they are there and uh, um, you know, create also some sort of forming and bonding experience for them. Um, there's probably much more to it, but I would say uh, on a simple level, um, I would say these uh, steps are, are crucial. Um, I would like to end up my talk with uh, a question for everyone. So what's recruitment for underrepresented groups if, uh, if your company is fundamentally not inclusive? I would say there are only two scenarios. So um, you can conduct all of these diversity efforts uh, with um, no further insights and not being inclusive or start again from asking why. Um, ask your leaders, ask the stakeholders, ask the founders, uh, why would you like to have a culture like that? Um, I already, <coughs> sorry, I, I told you a lot of um, the reasons why to do that, but maybe not all the companies would like to do that. So um, I would say this is a very important question to ask. And again, um, I would like to learn more, so that's why I'm here. I'll be really happy to take your questions. And please send me your feedback. Uh, this is my Twitter account. Um, yeah, and hope you have a great day here.